So today we're going to talk about load testing or performance testing and what we want out of it and what are KPIs, key performance indicators, uh, those type of things. And so, you know, there's really kind of two things we do in load tests. One of them is we try and get a raw performance number, right? And by raw performance number, I mean just like how fast can it go, what's its latency, those kinds of things. We'll talk about the details of that later. The other use for a load or performance test is regression. So a lot of times you want to know in a new release or a new piece of software or a new system, a new anything really, is the overall performance of this better or worse? Or is it still within the guidelines of what you need for your production environment? Um, and so that's raw and regression. Those are really the two main purposes uh, in my mind, uh, and I'm sure people will correct me as usual, uh, but I'm gonna go with that. And then the other thing is we have isolated tests and integrated load tests. And I probably should have started there, but I, you know, I wanna set the um, stage for this. So an isolated test is one where we're only performance testing a couple components, one or more, one or a couple, and it's a lot of times it's really for raw throughput. And we'll talk about more of that in a little while. Um, the other one is a fully integrated test. And that's one where uh, you're trying to get a feel for an overall system where you have enough of the players involved in this system to understand how they interact with each other. So an isolated test, we're not looking for interaction. We're just trying to get a feel for maximum throughput. And in an integrated test, uh, we are trying to understand the impact different parts have on each other in performance. So that kind of gives us four quadrants, right? Um, we have the raw and isolated. This is totally the maximum throughput. If I ran this and there was nothing else running on the entire planet and there were no interactions, how fast would this go? And um, that is useful, but it's probably mostly useful in a isolated tester probably. And it, it's good for giving you a basic feel. Um, it, but it's also really good for regression because they're super easy to run. An isolated test is means you don't have to coordinate with a bunch of other teams. You don't have to generate a bunch of other load. Uh, you basically just rerun this one flat out test and you see if it got better or worse. What it won't tell you is, um, did you crush some other system that's going to be interacting with you if um, when you run the integrated test? Uh, so the integrated test, uh, they give you a feel for your actual system throughput right? The actual system latency when all the pieces are turned on. And in regression tests, uh, it's just the best way to go. So integrated is really what you want to do. Isolated is probably what you're going to have to do um, because it's simpler and it's less costly. Um, so, I, you know, the only other thing I wanted to say here is what I uh, wrote is, which is load and performance testing are often held until the very end of a process. And that comes with its own problems, right? In the end, you may find, oh, this thing won't actually work, or we don't have the right hardware. We don't have the right uh, libraries under this. We don't have, didn't write the code correctly. We didn't optimize it. Um, you don't want to prematurely optimize. That'll probably be another talk. Uh, but in this case, it's usually uh, something that waits till the end. So the question is, when we do a load test, what do we want out of it? So somebody asked me the other day, they're like, well, what are we testing for? Like, what numbers do I need? And the answer is your business requirements determine the functionality. They throughput and latency. And I'll talk about what those are in a minute. Your financial requirements uh, determine some of the choices and how you're going to achieve that. So we could scale up, scale out, we could tune. Um, it, partially our finances are going to determine. So the business will determine the requirements for throughput and latency. And you your financial requirements will determine how you do that. The technical implementation um, you, that you do could either be scaling by throwing hardware at it or software at it, or it could be uh, performance tuning or both. So there are two simple metrics uh, in my mind that uh, you can use to decide whether your system's performing under load. It's a little more complicated than that, but let's pretend. One of them is operations per second or transactions per second, some people call it. So let's say OPS the total amount of traffic that can be pushed through a system. And then the other one is latency. And that's how long an individual requester has to wait for their operation complete. So TPS is um, the traffic uh, and the latency represents the individual wait time. And depending on the app, you may not care what the wait time is. A web service, it may be super, that's called a lot, uh, embedded in other applications, could uh, latency might be a big deal. 
in a batch job, it may not be a big deal if something goes from 10 to 30 milliseconds, right? Because you may scale it other ways. The All TPS and latency tell you is whether you met your target. You end up having to use a different set of metrics to determine what needs to be done. So we look at operations per second and the latency, if those numbers aren't where we need them, we need to look at resource utilization and the execution profiles to understand why the system works the way it does. So a lot of times we'll just run a test, see if it meets the OPS, the operations per second and the latency, if it does, or if it's not regressed enough, we'll just stop. So what is latency? Latency is the execution time of a single operation. Uh, putting it another way, uh, slightly flipping it around, the wait time is for an individual request is proportional to the latency of a usual latency of an individual request and the resource availability. So if I'm the only person in the system and the latency is low, I get great performance. If the latency in general for performing a single request is low, but I have, don't have enough resources available, then my wait time will be high. So it's kind of an interesting, you know, you have latency, and then in this case, I declared something I, I called wait time. And you just kind of got to think about those come into play when you're tuning the system. Do I care about the latency? Is it really the wait time that matters? In which case, if I need to lower the wait time, I could lower the wait latency or I could increase the resource availability, maybe, assuming I have enough, uh, don't have a choke point somewhere. Operations per second. So that was the other one of these. So throughput is proportional to the latency time the parallelism. So the number of operations per second, which is the throughput, is proportional to how long an individual request takes, a product of that, and the number of parallel executions I can do. Right? If I can only do one parallel execution, then the throughput equal is directly proportional to the latency of a single request. Latency is also a uh, a proxy for efficiency, right? So if we can lower the latency of something, a lot of times that means we processed it more efficiently. Um, so in this case, throughput is proportional to the efficiency product of the efficiency and the parallelism. Um, a system can have high throughput and high latency. We go and we measure our operations per second and our latency, uh, and then we try and figure out is that throughput, which is really kind of what we're looking for. Um, then we figure out where what we need to do. Do we are we going to increase the parallelism or are we going to lower the resource utilization uh, and we might do both right so and um, or we might increase the power of the resource so we can scale up we can scale out or we can become more efficient so resource utilization um, should also be measured as part of the load testing um, these measurements are try and understand where the constraints are so if your system has a limited tps um, and you increase the number of parallel, the amount of parallelism, and it doesn't get any faster. Then you have some other resource problem, and you need to go look at it. Uh, and, and I don't mean to minimize that, but that actually becomes uh, kind of more interesting. Uh, a lot of times we'll do the, did it pass or not? If it didn't pass, then we go into the research utilization phase. Uh, probably the last thing here is, um, are, how are you going to run this? Are you going to run it as a standalone test or an integrate test? And Integrate standalone tests are the easiest. One one is the easiest number, right? So in a standalone test, you can use it for regression analysis. You can also use it for basic performance tuning, although it won't tell you the impact other things have on it. Um, it's highly repeatable. That's probably the best thing. You can run a standalone load test anytime if you have isolated resource. It's super easy, but they are lousy proxies for absolute system performance. And that's because you share access with other components in a real system and those uh, components may impact your performance or you may impact theirs. So it's not absolute system performance, it would be relative system performance and they are useful uh, for checking performance tuning. Um, the other one is everything gets involved and this is like the full blown integrated test. It can be pretty expensive. Um, a lot of times they really have to be done. The question is uh, when you do an initial release or a major release or there's a crash flash crash or there's uh, some banking crisis or there's something else, um, will you be able to handle the load? A lot of times you never tested for it because you never assumed it. But if you want to get a real feel, and this can be really hard in a big system, um, we'll talk about why and how we can do it another time. Uh, like I said, you got to decide, is it uh, a single test, standalone test, or is it going to be a, an integrated test and are you looking for raw regression? And that's it. So I hope that is some background. I'm going to try and fill this out with more details in future talks. Uh, have a great day.